Welcome to Carol and Gary's Sea America Tour. Hello again, everyone. After a rainy drive on Friday, December 13th, Carol, Jasper, and I are now in Jacksonville, Florida. On Saturday, December 14th, Carol and I drove to a place called Kingsley Plantation. The Kingsley Plantation sits on the shore of the St. Johns River on Fort George Island. Fort George Island was named for a 1736 fort built to defend the southern flank of Georgia when it was a colony. The drive to the plantation followed a narrow dirt road that wound through a live oak forest. Originally built in 1798 by enslaved craftsmen during John McQueen's ownership, the Plantation House is the oldest plantation residence still standing in Florida. In 1814, the plantation was sold to Zephaniah Kingsley. Zephaniah, a successful slave trader, merchant and planner in Spanish Florida, bought Anna as a slave in Havana, Cuba in 1806. Anna was 13 years old. By the time Anna turned 18, she and Zephaniah were married and had three children. Anna was still a slave and so were the children. Slavery was determined by the mother's status. Zephaniah freed Anna and their then four children in 1811. And as I said, the family moved to the Kingsley Plantation in 1814. Still under Spanish rule, Anna was able to become her husband's business partner, own her own plantation, and strangely enough, own her own slaves. The Spanish had a different attitude toward slavery than the Americans in the South at the time. The Spanish saw slavery as a temporary status from which you could buy or earn your way to freedom. With an enslaved workforce of approximately 60, the plantation produced Sea Island cotton, citrus, sugarcane, and corn. Many of the buildings at Kingsley Plantation are made of tabby. Tabby is a mixture of lime, sand, and water. The lime was obtained by cooking whole oyster shells in a kiln, then adding water to break them down into the lime mixture. This process is called slaking. Whole shelves and pieces were then added into the tabby cement mixture to provide more volume. This tabby concrete was then poured into forms. When the cement hardened, the forms were removed and a thin layer of mortar was spread over the walls. Some of the buildings, including the barn, kitchen, and the slave quarters have tabby cement and tabby bricks. The tabby bricks were made by the same process, but whole shells were not added to the bricks. The tabby mixture was poured into brick molds and left to harden. Approximately one-fifth of a mile from the plantation home are the deteriorating remains of 25 tabby cabins. Arranged in a semicircle, there were originally 32 cabins, 16 on either side of the road. This area represents the slave community homes of the men, women, and children who lived and worked on the Kingsley Plantation more than 150 years ago. Sea Island cotton has a strong silk-like fibers and smooth black seeds. Fibers are one and a half to two inches long. The labor of cultivating and harvesting cotton was intensive. The cotton fibers grow in balls about the size and shape of a walnut. The cotton was picked by hand and brought into sheds where it was prepared for sale. Sorting removed damaged cotton and separated it into different qualities. Dust and any debris was removed from the cotton and the fibers spread out. Finally the cotton seeds were removed and the cotton baled to be shipped. It took on average 1,500 pounds of seed cotton to fill a 300 pound bag of clean marketable cotton. Sea Island cotton was the principal cash crop on Fort George Island from the early 1790s to 1865 when the Civil War ended. Since the Civil War ended slavery, the large pool of free labor needed to grow cotton was gone. Many freed slaves continued to cultivate Sea Island cotton with good yields but lacked the skills to market their crop. On Monday, December 16th, Carol and I visited the five-acre Caddyshack Ranch Wildlife Sanctuary. The Wildlife Sanctuary's primary focus is on the rescue of exotic animals from serious situations. When an animal arrives at the Caddyshack Ranch, they have a loving forever home for life. Current residents include tigers, lions, leopards, foxes, and cotamundis. The sanctuary does not breed, trade, buy, or sell any of their residents. One of the first animals that we saw was Nikki, a Siberian tiger. Nikki was born on December 9, 2011 and has two sisters, Cayenne and Jade. 
Nikki, along with her sisters, are among the 21 tigers cared for at the sanctuary. The next three tigers are sisters and all came from a zoo that was closing in Wisconsin in January 2013 when the tigers were 17 months old. This is Sprout. This is Star. And this is Runty. Depending on the genetics of the parents, white and orange tiger cubs can be born in the same litter. This is Amara. She was born on November 25, 2011, and rescued on the same day as Nikki, Cayenne, and Jade from a place that could no longer care for any of them. This is Abu, one of two male African lions at the sanctuary. He is seven years old and was acquired from a sanctuary in South Florida on November 19, 2019. This is Kalahala, a 15-year-old female black spotted leopard. Kalahala was born at the Caddyshack Ranch on June 16, 2004. Her mother, Skywalker, also lives at the sanctuary. This is Cody, a four and a half year old white nosed Cotamundi who arrived when he was eight weeks old. The Cotamundi is related to the raccoon but has a slimmer body, a longer tail, and a snout. They have white fur around their eyes and nose. They are common in Central and South America. This is Tundra, an Arctic fox, found wandering on an island south of Jacksonville. She was acquired in May of 2019 and is approximately one year old. This is Squeakers, another Cotamundi. Squeakers was born on December 1, 2005 and has been a resident of the sanctuary since June 2016. This is Merlin and Gracie. I can't tell which is which. They are servals. Gracie came to the sanctuary in September 2019 when she was four months old. Merlin came to the sanctuary in June 2019 when he was five months old. Servals are slender, medium-sized cats that stand 21 to 24 inches at the shoulder and weigh 20 to 40 pounds. They are characterized by small heads, large ears, a golden yellow coat spotted and striped with black. They also have short black tipped tails. Their ears can rotate independently 180 degrees to listen for prey, which are rodents and birds. On Wednesday, December 18th, Carol and I took Jasper on a half-day road trip. We followed Florida Highway 105 east again as we did on Friday until we got to the turnoff for Kingsley Plantation on Fort George Island. At the turnoff, we didn't turn but rather stayed on Highway 105 and continued north along the Atlantic Ocean. As we kept driving, we crossed onto Little Talbot Island. We stopped at Little Talbot Island State Park and walked along the seashore.
After leaving Little Talbot Island State Park, we continued north to Big Talbot Island where we parked again and walked along the seashore. After leaving Big Talbot Island, we continued north to Amelia Island. This appeared to be a heavily populated island, so with it getting late in the afternoon, we turned around and drove back to the motorhome. We will be leaving on Sunday, December 22nd for Mims, Florida, where we will be snowbirding until March 31st of 2020. If you like this video but have not yet subscribed, please do so to be notified of future videos, and as always, feel free to share with your friends. Thanks for watching!